Hi, submarine friends. Welcome back to watching me build my diesel electric submarine. So I installed the air plumbing system and I'm short a few parts, but I'm going to the city tomorrow to get those parts and then I can complete that. So it's pretty simple. So this line right here connects to the onboard 12 volt air compressor. So when I surface, so I take water out of the variable ballast bladder with the electric pump. So I turn on the electric pump, water leaves that bladder, not even a gallon of water leaves, and it starts to surface. Once I'm at the surface, then I open the vent in the hatch so that air can come into the submarine, which the 12 volt compressor will then take and push into the ballast tank through this valve right here. That's where the forward ballast tank, and this one here is the back ballast tank. So all I have to do is leave this valve open and then that system works. Now, let's say for some reason that 12 volt uh, compressor failed. Well, actually, let me tell you a story about that. I'm really quite pissed because I did not have a check valve on the line that goes from the forward ballast tank back to these valves. And so what happens when the submarine is submerged, water comes back through that line and ended up back in the compressor. And I think it damaged it. It still works. It works just fine, but when you get into the higher pressure around 100 PSI, it gets really noisy. So I don't wanna risk it. So I ordered a new one. I just came down to the shop down from upstairs and I ordered a new one. Luckily they're on sale right now, so that's nice. But it just pisses me off. But at least I have spare parts. Anyways, that's the story of my 12 volt compressor. So now let's say, like I was saying, that the 12 volt compressor has failed. Now what I can do is I have two large holding tanks in the back ballast tank. Those are those two tanks you can see on the outside of the sub. They're half out and half in. So then I just open this valve and now that energizes these two valves with air from the holding tank. So that'll blow the ballast tanks at the surface and we're, we're all safe and everything's good. Now let's say the compressor has failed. Let's say for some reason there's no air there which is kind of ridiculous because I have a gauge right here that keeps track of that pressure. I won't dive unless there's air in there. But let's say all of that fails. Well, then I still have a scuba tank with 3000 PSI in here. I haven't put it in yet because I don't know where to put it yet. But that tank will surface the submarine from depth anytime, no problem, stored energy, but I have to manually connect it because I don't want it connected where I can accidentally hit a valve or something. I don't like that. So I just have to undo the line from the 12 volt compressor and connect it to the, to the uh, scuba tank. It's super simple. And I also use that scuba tank if I have to ditch. So if I have to bail out of the submarine, I can bail out from a hundred feet. No problem with that scuba tank. So anyways, that's the air system. Uh, triple redundancy that's pretty good plus let's say that the scuba tank didn't work the compressor didn't work the holding tanks didn't work i can still drop my drop weight so that's four systems plus there's a fifth system i can pump all the water out of the variable ballast tank so there's five systems to bring this thing to the surface Anyway, so that's the air system, and this showed up. I really like this. I'm really happy with this. This is my, I thought it was a seven switch, but it's two, four, six switches, which is just fine. And I decided I'm not hooking the scrubber up to a switch. It has what's known as a high use connector. This is actually a sub C connector. It works underwater. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna have this wire sitting in here out of the way minding its own business and if i need the scrubber it's because i have a problem 
So all I have to do is the, the other end of this plug connector will be right here. I just have to plug them in and then the scrubber starts. Again, I don't want it on a switch that can accidentally be turned on and then the scrubber is running for no reason. That, that just, that makes no sense. That's not a good idea. So, and there's really no need for it to be plugged in because I'm not operating this submarine with the scrubber all the time. It'll be rarely that I use the scrubber because this sub is so big, the volume is so great that I can breathe in here for quite a long time without the need for life support. So I dive the sub, I look at what I want to look at and I can spend an hour down there screwing around and then I can come to the surface and vent out all the air in here and replace the air and away I go. So I like that because it's a really inexpensive way to to go diving because this stuff is expensive. This absorbance is expensive. Oxygen is really expensive. So, you know, why not just make multiple shorter dives? Now, if I found something super interesting, you know, the chest of gold is right in front of me. Well, then, you know, I can stay down here for 36 hours and look at stare at that gold. Let's just turn on the oxygen feed and turn on the scrubber and I can stay down here for a long time. So that's how it works. So now I have to figure out where I'm going to put this. The mistake I made before was I had an electrical panel right here and um, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see the switches. I couldn't see anything in the pilot seat. So I have to mount this so that I was thinking about mounting it like this in different places. And then I came to the conclusion why don't I just mount it in a plastic project box and um, have it on a cord so I can set it. I already tried this out. I set this out. The box can sit right here. I can even put two clips on it. I was going to say a magnet, but this is aluminum. So it can just clip on there. I can set it on my lap. I can do anything I want. So. I think that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to have it on a cord that'll reach, you know, like this far, which would be my lap. And then normally it will just store by sitting right on there. So I think that's the smart way to do it. This way I can always see it easily and I have to have glasses on to see things. So if it's on my lap, then I don't have to worry about having glasses on to see what I'm doing. So that's kind of nice. So I'm thinking that my electrical wire might be here today or tomorrow, but tomorrow I'm going to go to the city and get missing parts for the air and hydraulic system. I need a bunch of valves and hoses and stuff and I want to buy them now. Uh, so the, yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to go and do that. So that is my progress. I'm pretty darn happy. I have to say with this, with this, uh, with this air system I can see this gauge nicely I actually had to move it because I'm missing a fitting right there so I had to force that hose so this has to be rotated up just a little bit and then I can see it perfectly see it's still holding air pressure so or is it I think maybe the gauge is bad anyways um, that's all I have to report but that's good because this is really good. I'm really happy with this. I used this before. It worked just fine. But I've simplified it. I didn't have it. I didn't have it like this before. I had the, another set of valves back there. So I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, that's it. Ciao.